So, students in R222, put your books down, uh, get you prepared for the quiz. <coughs> My students in COM 151 or Multimedia Communications, they were creating podcasts that were broken down into small groups and they were going into my office to record the podcasts because we don't have a soundproof area here in the Mac lab. And from there, what they were doing is they were coming back in here and they were putting everything together so we could have a presentation or, a, as I like to call it, COM 151 idle later on in the day. When you desaturate the color, careful when you're doing this. Ten weeks into the semester, they pretty much have all the skills that they need. They just need to refine them. In other words, they've gone through the, first, the initial stages for the first time. Uh, they know the film exposure. They know the film processing. Uh, they know the basic printing techniques. They're now into filters. Uh, they're now into fine-tuning their prints, and they're getting ready for their final portfolio. Um, they're pretty well self-sufficient. In the beginning of the semester, they feel really kind of panicky. and. And, and very cautious about everything they do, but now they're just really working on their own, and it's a good idea to kind of leave them that way. I think you took this on. I think you killed your paper. I don't care. It's not well, music. All right. Well, I'll put it in there. Okay, you don't have to leave it in here for like 15 seconds. seconds. Wow. This is so, like, great. Dave, how do I get rid of the phone? <laughs> <laughs> You didn't even see it. <laughs> what? I like punched your you face. Punched. Is that what it was? I thought yeah. it was my old hair coming back. Yeah, that's awesome. I don't have any more. Um, this particular group that had a couple of um, um, teachers in it, the kids who really like to help each other, and, and that was fun to watch. Uh, and I always encourage them to work with each other because once you explain it to somebody else, it becomes clear in your head. So I kind of promote that going back and forth. First of all, uh, Liz was giving us a uh, PowerPoint presentation on an interview that she had conducted uh, in the town of Greenwich, I believe it was, with this uh, religious camp. Um, I don't know all the particulars about the camp, about how long it's been here or whatnot, but basically what she was doing was talking with the events coordinator at this uh, camp and asking them, what kinds of special events do you have here? So she would go out and interview the folks find out how they did it, and then come back into class and make a presentation to the class. So that the class also learns what's going on firsthand uh, in so our how community. how long does it take to go on these hiking trails? It right? depends on which one. The one around the lake right here can take, like if you went to the lake, it only takes like 20 minutes. Right. So that's not that bad. But it looks like there's one that goes behind the lake too. Yeah. This is one of those smart classrooms, so we're able to go live to the internet and take websites from the, that might be mentioned in the chapter and go live and check them out right then and there. And even when Liz was doing her presentation with the resort, after she did her PowerPoint, goes, she was able to go live to the internet right down, uh, and find that particular end. site and walk us yeah. through. So it's really um, a great way for them to hook things together. Is it your, your round from it? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. 
want this game to be played at in their last game. They held Iona to 41 points. as a source of power to deal with reality are both kind of there. And so, you know, one of the questions is, you know, what is the value of art? You know, on the one hand, it's an escape. On the other hand, it gives her power. We could ask the same thing, not only about, it's a painting that she looks at, not only about the old painting, but about his book. What is the value of Stephen King's book? On the one hand, it's an escape, and it's definitely that. It's a way for people to burrow into a book and close out what's around them, which a lot of people do, uh, not only with Stephen King, but with all kinds of reading. But also it could be, well, what's the value that we take back? If we escape into the book, what do we bring back with us uh, when we come back to reality? Are his books inspirational in some way? Are they just mindless entertainment, which is one argument, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, uh, I've broken the class into conferences uh, over two or three days. So instead of meeting as a class, I met uh, in pairs at conferences to talk about their final projects. Uh, and the idea of the conference is to do things with them that you can't do in the classroom. Uh, in the classroom, it, it's possible to have a discussion about individual projects, but that, I, I don't see the classroom as the space for that. I see it as the space for uh, group discussion and for group work on projects. But I, I like the notion of a a paired or a group conference, a smaller group, because then the students can engage in a discussion with each other about their projects. I'm there to kind of guide them, to ask questions, to confront them. What's your sense of the assignment? Maybe? Well, that's like the previous papers, that we should relate what we read to the theory toolbox, to different concepts, and um, to uh, evaluate the different uh, sources in the annotated bibliography to evaluate everything, not just to list it, but to give a synopsis of what we uh, read. It's more uh, uh, time intensive than a regular classroom to meet with 15 or 20 students over three days instead of just meeting with them that once. Uh, but the payoff is pretty good. I'm getting the final projects from them uh, in a day or two, and so I'm interested to see if uh, they were able to do from our discussion of their pre-drafts and their development of their drafts to see what kind of revised projects they're turning in. Generally, if you're going to be coming in full-time, we recommend that your first semester you take a freshman seminar course. The freshman seminars are the HRD courses up here. Usually you take HRD 110. Um, what that is, is it's basically just an orientation course introduce you to the services available on campus. It'll help you get prepared for scheduling for later semesters and just basically get you used to being a college student. Okay. So that's generally recommended your first full-time semester. Okay. Um, and if you're fairly weak in math, there's a good chance that you should probably start off in either the Math 090 or Math 097, neither of which get college credit, but they do count toward full-time status for financial aid. Okay? Yeah. And we can give you a placement test to determine where you need to come in on those. Okay. Um, the Center for Advisement and Testing, um, we were meeting with students. Students coming in, looking at their degree programs, seeking assistance in choosing the correct courses to make sure that they're on a uh, path towards graduation. Um, we saw a number of students that day. Actually, I think when your film crew was here, there was only maybe a, a handful of students coming in. But as soon as they left, right about noon, there was a big sort of rush of students who came in uh, on that day. So I want to say we saw probably 25 to 30 students on that day um, here in the Center for Advisement and Testing. Yeah, they updated the registration forms. 
They did? Yeah. Wow. Just changed them around a little bit, made sure like the CRN number and The strength of our program is the operation of Randall's Conference Center, better known as Randall's Dining Facility. Uh, the restaurant that we have on campus is open Wednesday nights for American Regional Cuisine, reservation only, and also on Thursday. We do kind of uh, creative, uh, main thing is the creative, the creativity of the food together. And this is the second semester uh, culinary class, and that's uh, those two functions throughout the community um, have been sold out and they normally are once they're advertised in the paper. Um, and we have a following of uh, public uh, that attend our dinners and lunches every year by reservations only. So I go out and talk to them and get some feedback from them and how they enjoyed the meal or and also uh, what's important, some positive criticism that we can that I can take back into the class and share with the student just to make their training uh, a little bit easier, a little bit better. The, um, and again, in the routing table, what's the first column of a routing table? So when you have your routing table, how, first of all, back up. If this is a routing table, what's the command to show a routing table? Ooh, you guys are good. The class um, is about, an overall big picture, is about routing. And how do, on the internet, you have all these devices that allow your request for web page to go through. So this class works on how do you get these devices to talk to one another. And so that class, we were focusing on um, specific protocols, and uh, EIGRP, OSPF, and how those devices, getting them up and running, and then configuring them to communicate properly and efficiently. The key now at this point in that semester is how efficiently can these devices, how quickly can they communicate so that you have the quickest way through the internet. So if you want to Google or Yahoo, and how can those devices find the closest Google or Yahoo site as, um, as efficiently as possible. The class was structured so that we had team leaders that would help other students who maybe were trying to catch on to what the top, what the protocols, how they were working. So a lot of times you had a student standing and they would be helping other students. Um, many times the students have gone through um, simulations and they've practiced at home. So it really depends on the level of the student, that how much they've read, how they've practiced, how much they've practiced at home. Now Hugh, what were you referencing with default dash information originate? What were you referencing? Um, referencing to the ice That pushes it out, right? Well, yeah. Alright, so I want to just go over the instructions because this essay is harder than the previous ones and I want you to try as um, hard as you can to make the draft that you turn in as perfect as it can be. Proofread, you'll see when I proofread the sample that I wrote that I omitted some words, I made some mistakes and I didn't really catch those mistakes until I was reading it out loud to the class before you. So that's an example, I can't illustrate that example because I've already made the corrections, but you'll see them when we go over my essay, that an example of how proofreading out loud can really, really help you to find who you work. So I'm going to ask you all to do that, proofread several times, including at least one time out loud. Um, but that's, that's down at the bottom where it says, please proofread. I want to just go over the requirements for the assignment because there are parts to this, and I know we've looked at it before, and I believe I made this correction <coughs> for you, but um, it's not on the printed instructions. So under the bulleted items where we have the patterns of development listed, you should add classification or division. Did we add that last week? Yeah, okay. That was the one I left out. This means that you get to leave one out because there are more patterns of development there than you need to use. The, uh, the class that we were, um, that I was in that day was English 100B, and it's a composition class that actually runs for two semesters. The students get two semesters of freshman composition, and this is the second part of that. Um, that day in class we were, if 
I remember correctly, going over one, one or two of the patterns of development that the students were supposed to use in an essay assignment. And the um, primary focus that day was on cause and effect analysis, which was, is one of the patterns that, um, that I was hoping they would use in the assignment. And the assignment was an analysis of an emotion. Um, so before that class, we had gone over the assignment, and I had given them a sample essay that um, uses several patterns of development. Um, but that day in class, I was emphasizing the one particular pattern, reviewing the instructions again, because I think a key in composition class is that um, students need to be reminded of the instructions and to slowly and carefully read and reread the instructions. So I was actually using the overhead projector, which um, is very useful for me in composition classes, to be able to um, go over something and project it on the wall. And they had, they had good ideas that day. I felt like we were really having a give and take discussion. That doesn't always happen in composition class. I do a little bit of lecturing. Um, I try to, um, try to have as much interaction with them as I can. Um, but, you know, that works better with some groups than with others. Ready to take two, ready to open the tab mic, ready to cue talent number one. And information. Open talent mic, cue talent, take two. New international airport for the metro area. Did you say something about the music forecast? Ready to roll VTR sound up, ready to tell VTR. Morris, join us for I am the nation. Roll VTR, it's roll is all VTR sound up. TV studio production, COM 185, meets Tuesdays and Thursdays from 2 to 4.30. And students in the class were just coming in from the telethon, which was the weekend before. Sunday was the annual Prospect Child and Family Telethon, a live nine-hour TV event. So the students, for the first time, had done live production with no do-overs. They were really exposed to the pressure of, of timing and getting things done uh, as a group for the first time, as opposed to regular production class where they get a chance to do a second and third take to get it perfect. Uh, so coming in they had a little more swagger, a little more confidence and and really understood the importance of teamwork and, and anticipating what was going to happen in the next few seconds or the next few minutes. Uh, and, and so things were just a little bit quicker and a little bit sharper on that particular day. Um, I think largely because of their experience uh, the weekend before. Hello and welcome to Eye in the Nation. Our first story highlights the opening of the Ready, new one. International Airport. Sunday, we need to be here at 11. The first thing we'll probably do is a Q to Q, which for you, those of you who do, don't know what that is, it is going from each lightning sound Q to the next so that those people can practice that. And so Aaron can practice calling the show. Um, after that, we will run through the show once. The play we uh, presented in this, this spring is Trudy Blue by Marsha Norman. She is a rather well-known uh, American playwright who has won the Pulitzer Prize for another one of her plays. And her plays are always a challenge because the characters um, always have a problem that involves um, life and death. How is the science there? I hated it. I didn't even enter my project. I just dumped the whole thing in the trash. Mm. You dumped the mice in the trash? What do you care? You hated the mice. I didn't hate the mice themselves. I hated keeping the dead ones in the refrigerator. You're going to fail science. He's going to fail me, Mom. I should tell Don. He's going to be mad at you. I have to tell her, too. And she 
she will never get over it. You shouldn't have to do this. Nobody should have to do this. So don't. You could go to Peru right now, and you wouldn't have to tell anyone anything. I can't run away, Trudy. I just don't know what to do. What students take away from all of these experiences, feeling more confident in who they are, feeling as though they have a greater self-esteem and awareness of what their potential can be. The main ones you would do. Well, deficient fluid volume's got to be one, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's still NPO and he was vomiting and he's already malnourished from before. My job is just a lot of everything. Mainly, I'm a, a, a supervisor, I guess would be the best way to describe it, and with the crew of four. But I also do a lot of the ordering, almost all of it, for the cleaning supplies. Meaning I have to keep on top of things, what's being used. I, I really stress inventory. I like to keep, you know, if I order 10 cases of gloves, you know, a week later, there's one case left that's not good. So I just, you know, I just go around to the closets throughout the campus and just get uh, ideas of what's being used, how much. And the guys are pretty good about, you know, when I ask them things like, you know, how come you're using this much, or have you been using this, or will you be using that? And it's just a lot of, a lot of legwork to this job. Really running around, I'm always, always going somewhere, doing something. Well, I've always consider myself like the middleman of, of the whole day here. I mean, because I know all the day custodians and I know all the night custodians because I've talked to them. Whereas say like, the night and day guys don't interact much because they never see each other. And the mood here is kind of, uh, differs from day to day, obviously, but it's always busier, always in the late afternoon, early evening hours. By 10 o'clock, things start to calm down. It's almost like a ghost town. There's a couple cars in the parking lot. Um, it's very quiet. It has a almost surreal kind of feeling. The stillness, the quiet. And the place is totally, uh, totally quiet. Uh, pretty desolate. It, the, the campus is very empty. It can be scary because all the lights shut off. Campus becomes dark. If you've ever been at this campus at 11 o'clock at night, again, it kind of goes back to that early morning time. It's very quiet. 